Hello everyone. Psalm 23, often called the Shepherd Psalm, is one of the most popular and loud passages in the Bible. According to tradition, it was written by King David, one of the earliest kings of Israel and an ancestor of Jesus. A lot of people throughout the world have found inspiration, encouragement, comfort and peace in this particular psalm and it is frequently used in Christian funeral and memorial services. Friends, there is a story about two men who were invited to recite this psalm at a banquet. One was a famous, eloquent and skillful orator. He recited the psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. In word and pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul, and so on. His recitation was so powerful that when he finished, the people applauded and cheered loudly, and even asked for an encore so that they might hear his wonderful voice again. Then the other man, who was much older, repeated the same psalm. But when he had finished, there was completely silence in the room. There was no applause, no sound whatsoever. Instead, the people were deep in thought, devotion and prayer. In amazement, a woman leaned over to the orator and asked him why there was a such a difference. The orator replied, the difference is, I know the Psalm 23, but my friend knows the shepherd. I know the Psalm 23, but my friend knows the shepherd. Friends, what about you? Do you truly know the shepherd? Do you recognize his voice? Do you really believe that he is a shield around you? If you don't, then you have an opportunity to hear an important message from today's gospel. That is, how exactly you can be saved. If you do know the shepherd, recognize his voice and truly believe in his love, then you can be assured of his care and protection and you can be assured that he will make your life more abundant and rich. Friends, to understand the Gospel, it is necessary first to go back to the previous chapter of the Gospel of John. In the ninth chapter, John tells the story of the healing of the man born blind. The disciples asked Jesus whether it was the man's sin or his parents' sin that had caused his blindness. Jesus replied, it was neither, but God was using the blind man to manifest his glory. In fact, Jesus not only gave the man physical sight, but also the gift of faith or spiritual insight. Because in the rest of the story, we see the blind man gradually coming to a full understanding of Jesus' identity. He went from seeing the man called Jesus to calling him a prophet, to recognize him as a man of God and to addressing and worship him as Lord. Not only was he healed, but his life was also drastically changed. But the proud Pharisees did not believe in Jesus. They interrogated the man and his parents and asked them to denounce Jesus. So Jesus used the analogy of a shepherd to describe his role and explain who he is and what he is doing. Such stories and illustrations were familiar to the people of Jerusalem and Judea because the Jews in Jesus' day were first shepherds and then farmers. Moreover, in the Old Testament era, sheep were often used to illustrate people and shepherds to illustrate leaders, such as God and kings. Many of the Old Testament figures were shepherds. Most prominent among them were Abraham, Jacob, Moses, David and the prophet Amos. So the people who listened to Jesus must have understood the temporal and earthly aspect of shepherding and caring for your flock, but they also must have understood the illustration of God's care for his own people. Friends, 
In today's text, Jesus uses two sets of images. In the first, the scene is a common sheepfold in a village, where different shepherds would bring their sheep each night and hire a gatekeeper to guard the entrance. In the morning, as the sun came up, the shepherds would return to the sheepfold and be let in by the gatekeeper. They then would call their sheep out of the fold and lead them to pasture. True shepherds would have no reason to use inappropriate tactics to enter. They enter in by the same door as the sheep. In contrast, thieves and robbers would gain access in some other way. Using this illustration, Jesus identifies himself as the true shepherd who comes into the world in the right and proper manner, calls his own sheep by name and leads them out of the darkness into the light. Then he goes ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. Friends, when the people, particularly the Pharisees, did not understand this analogy, Jesus gave them another illustration. He said, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Friends, here Jesus stressed that he is the true way, the right way, and the only way to the sheepfold. Jesus spoke of the gate to help clarify the image of the shepherd. This image is perhaps typical of any day in the Old Testament times. After letting the sheep graze through the morning hours, at midday, the shepherd would guide his sheep to pools of water to drink and then to a temporary shelter built of shrubs where they can rest and the shepherd himself would lay down across the entrance to the sheep enclosure so that the sheep cannot go in or out without stepping over him. In the same way, Jesus identifies himself as the gate or the door which protects the sheep and enables them to seek food and thus to have life. Thus, Jesus identifies himself in two images, that of the shepherd and the gate. Friends, Jesus then once again contrasted himself with the false shepherds. He is in fact very specific about those who came before him as thieves and robbers, whom the sheep rightly recognized them as strangers and fled. To whom does Jesus refer to as thieves and robbers? Obviously, Jesus was not saying that godly men like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel and other prophets who had come before him were thieves and robbers. Jesus did not say that they were, but they are thieves and robbers. Here Jesus was referring to those Pharisees of his time who preyed on the Israelites and used them for their own selfish ends. Finally, Jesus said, A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Friends, false shepherds take away life through deception and violence, but true shepherds care, protect and save life. Thieves and robbers take away life, but Jesus promises to give life and he gives it abundantly. Friends, it does not mean a promise of material abundance and the absence of illnesses and suffering. It rather consists of an abundance of love, joy, peace and the fruits of the Spirit, which come as a result of us being right with God through faith in Christ from the time of baptism to eternity. The Apostle Paul, for instance, was not rich in this world's goods, but he enjoyed the abundant life that Christ offers. He was content with just food and clothing, but he was rich toward in God. Friends, there are many important lessons we can learn from today's Gospel passage. 1. The Lord Jesus is our shepherd, and we are his sheep. Like a shepherd who knows every lamb in his flock, Jesus knows each one of us. He knows that just like a sheep, 
we are weak and vulnerable and we are constantly threatened by anti life forces such as sorrow suffering poverty hunger disease greed lust selfishness envy and death 2 the church is the sheep fold built by the lord jesus the church here does not just refer to the hierarchical structure and building but to the community of believers who are one in mind and heart he has put us together in the church to protect us from predators false shepherds and evil forces who want to steal kill and destroy our precious life and has appointed the 12 apostles and then popes bishops priests nuns elders parents and god parents to be shepherds and gatekeepers in his place to protect and feed us he has also given us the scriptures that we might know his will and purpose in all areas of life 3 it is very important to belong to the sheep fold of christ his church if you are out of fellowship with god and isolated from other christians we can unwittingly fall prey to forces which can destroy us sin satan and a world in opposition to god and his people let us therefore fully know our shepherd gladly listen to his voice confidently follow him and willingly obey his teachings and commands because as long as we choose to live our lives according to the instructions of the lord we can rest assured of god's promise of abundant life for every day jesus calls us by name and leads us out to the best places where we can find everlasting peace joy and fellowship with god and his people he provides us with our daily bread he feeds our souls with his word He nourishes us with his own body and blood in the Eucharist. He does not leave us alone. He guides us in prayer. He directs us in our moral life. He encourages us to face our daily challenges. He leads us through green pastures and still waters and protects us from all evil. 5. The Lord Jesus is not only our shepherd but also the gate. He is not a gate or one of many gates but the gate as the door he provides salvation safety and sustenance for anyone who enters the community of believers let us confidently allow our lord jesus to be the gate and our shepherd of our life amen god bless you